have you uh, thought about trying to teach Gatlin and them or I mean I know Gatlin, I know, but I mean I'm not I don't specifically mean him, but there's probably some things that that you know that that you know he he needs to. I don't know, Gatlin's a pretty good give him a good hand. It's I mean, right now, what Brandon's I've been to, he's been at, he can make most people look sick dragging gas, he boys can rope and rides horses that can get around and get it done. Pretty good on cattle. Yeah. Does he know them cattle pretty good? Yeah. He's a Gatlin. Yeah. I mean, I think world Gatlin. A really just... good hand, I think. Uh, he, yeah, he, he's a super good hand. He's in a good spot there to teach a lot yeah, of kids. Yeah, he is. And I, I'm pretty high on Brett Franks. The last three, I like Brett. I like last Brett. three or four colts that I've had started, he started them. Yeah. And, you know, you go get one. At 30 days, you can lope her off on either lead and stop her and turn around one hand and open the gate on either side. That's asking a lot. It is. And they're quiet when he does it. Now, this last filly, Futurity filly that I just sold, uh, she was not gentle. And I could tell, I went, Brett rode her actually probably 45 days. And I could tell he, he still moved around her pretty soft. I mean, he, he knows how to get around one. And yeah. I could tell he didn't much trust her, you know. And I was the same way for a year. <laughs> but I turned, I, I made the mistake of turning her out and not riding her as quick as I should have. I think she would have competed with him if I'd have just got off my backside and done what I was supposed to do. But, well, you know, John, I mean, there's, there's so much yeah. come on, you know, Lynn and, and, you know, you can always look back and see what a kind of shoulda, woulda, coulda done. Yeah. But. Well, I, I think about a lot of the horses in the past. Uh, I tell you what got me about my horses is as good as they were, they weren't near as good as they could have been if I'd ask them right and and been consistent. About well, what do you think about that Ray Hunt thing? Do you think it? Well, you know, I, I went to two Ray Hunt clinics, and when I first started reading about him, I figured he'd be one of them bleeding heart dudes that wouldn't ever correct the horse and this and that, but I was bad wrong. Yeah. He'd correct the horse, but he'd make them think they did it themselves. Yeah. You know, and he learned from them Durant's boys. Yeah. I mean, and, yeah. you know, somebody asked me, they, and you said it yourself while ago, I mean, it's time in the saddle. Sure. Uh, and that's what, that, them boys were born in what, 1890, the Dorrance brothers? Yeah. I mean, and they'd worn up there in Idaho or some godforsaken place. I mean, <laughs> you, you, all, all they had to do was uh, ride horses. That's what I'm talking about. I mean, yeah. they, they, the reason they made them is they figured it out pretty quick and they, or they, they, they took them the time to figure it out, but, but they spent time doing it. They spent time in the saddle. They spent, you know, it's wet saddle blankets. And, and 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 one thing that I really want to <clears throat> ask your opinion, but I know you did the same way I am. I it, it, and I asked Punch, you know, and 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 and, and you and I've talked about it before, not on on the deal here, but you know they took these big pastures to start with and cut them up. Yeah. I, I mean, they 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 just ain't like it. They ain't the big, the big pastures like that. Well, they, the ranchers aren't like they used to be. That's right. A lot of the people that own ranches now have made their money somewhere else. Right? That's right. And they didn't have to figure out how to do that the hard way. That's right. You know, and, and those kind of people are a little bit harder to work for. It's like that guy I worked for down at Dublin. <laughs> I mean, he kept $6 million in his checking account, and you couldn't get him to pay his bills. <laughs> For 90 days, he's yeah. a, a money yeah. management yeah. deal. Is what it yeah. was. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It's just, things are different. You know, what, talking about Ray Hunt, one of the most profound things I think I ever heard anybody say, and it, he's teaching you how to train these horses and all this. And he said, if you're working for a rancher, you better do your job before you do your horse training, because if you don't, you'll be looking for a job. That's right. 
And I see a lot of kids now that'll quit whatever they're doing and start training on their horse. Maybe not abusing them, but training yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. Well, they're right in your way. Yeah, or the cattle are drifting off and they ain't paying no attention to where the cattle's at. Yeah. The cattle's reading you there. Yeah. <laughs> That's reading the horses there. That's the reason, you know, but. but I mean, Ray you know. was, oh, he was phenomenal. Yeah, oh yeah. You know. Uh, now, I used to be pretty hard on the horse once in a while. I'd, it wouldn't be a good thing to say, I guess, on film, but. Once in a while, you just have to wear one. You do. Out. It's Absolutely. kind of like a kid. If they need a spanking, Absolutely. give them a spanking and Absolutely. then leave them alone. Quit. That's right. That's exactly right. It's like a kid. You know, I mean, if, you, if they need a whooping, whoop them and don't keep picking at them. I mean. Yeah. Well, I see guys pick at them all the time, and the horses don't ever know what they're uh -huh. doing, uh -huh. really. You know. Uh, when I left the ranch up there, I had a big old brown three year old that was. Hey, we're talking about Lewis's. Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, it was pretty much a. He was a handful. No, Bobby knew nobody was gonna ride him. He gave him to me when I left, uh, and and <laughs> I got him. Well, Cody Lewis rode him a while for me, and then I was I was still working up there. Cody rode him, and I had my knee operated on, and uh, still kind of gimping around on it. And uh, Lynn Mays was uh, training horses out there north of town at the time. Lynn could sneak by a rank horse as good as anybody you'll ever see. Now he's a highway patrol. Uh, I got, turned the horse out, and I called Lynn, I was in the early fall, I said, would you ride this brown horse a time or two and get him where I can get on him and go? And he rode him three or four days, called me, and he said, you don't need to be riding this horse with a sore leg. <laughs> he said, let me just keep him. So he kept him until, gosh, wet in winter after the first of the year. And, I, I might have been the next brain that I left up there and took him to Dublin with me, and all I had for him to do was Jingle Myers, mm -hmm. which ain't good for a young horse. But, That's right. Uh, I took time. I bought a three-year-old half-brother to him at the same time uh, and took them both and finally sold that other horse down there, but just used them around, and he got to where he'd drive the mares around pretty good, and when I come back home, went to work, his son of a gun got to doing all kinds. He's doing a lot of stupid stuff to start with. He couldn't hardly saddle him. Couldn't hardly pull your breast collar around under his neck. He'd, he'd just have a fit. And all, just all kinds of stuff. And uh, I brought, come back and I rode him, cowboyed on him, off and on for a year. About, well, yeah, a year. Cause I know he bucked up in the trailer with a new saddle and hung the horn, broke the tree in the saddle and all kinds of good stuff. <laughs> but uh, just kept on doing Stuff. And he got in a deal where if he thought she was going to put any pressure on him, he'd rear up and lunge. Just jump way off mm -hmm. out there. And he might do it from here to the end of the house. And you're not even pulling on him. But I, went, I just kept riding him and just riding him and riding him and thinking, well, he'll quit it one of these days, you know. And uh, he uh, just wasn't going to give it up. We was out there at the dude ranch one day, helping them brand and, or something, and I was up in front of a, and was in the lane there, in front of a bunch of cows. He didn't like cows behind him, and he got to doing that, and he did it for probably 100 yards. And I thought, well, you ignorant sucker, I'm gonna fix that tomorrow. Can't today, but tomorrow. Well, I was, we was living up here on Highway 70. I was building all them barns and stuff out there that Jerry Hodge just sold. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I, Johnny Cooper was supposed to be in there the next morning at 10.30 and we were going to start on that hay barn. And I went down there and caught that horse about 6.30 and went out in the ring and pulled out about two cords of rope and picked my hand up. And that horse reared up and jumped. And when he did, I hit him right down between the eyes as hard as I could. And this went on until about 10.30, Cooper showed up. But when Cooper showed up, that horse's head was down there on the ground. Mm -hmm. And I could put my hand anywhere I wanted. And, Nothing that happened. That was the first of June, and the fourth of July, he was top horse up here in the road. <laughs> I mean, I've never seen a horse change as much as that horse did. That quick. That quick, mm -hmm. and I mean, it just a complete. All that saddling trouble, everything just went away. Well, he got a whooping. And uh, yeah, he didn't get picked at. He got a whooping. That's what I'm talking about. But I sold that horse in San Antonio that fall, and I shouldn't have. Should have kept him because we kind of reached an understanding. But you know that horse is—he was a real pretty brown horse, had a star, 
and the hair in his face started turning white that fall from me whooping him with that rope. I, I never seen that, but and I hard to tell that. But that's just what it took to get to that horse. And the, the guy that bought him, I took him out there and showed him, told him what he was. I said, you can ride him, but you're going to have to be firm on him. And uh, I, he kept him a week and called me and says, we, don't, we can't get along with this horse. And I said, what do you mean, Mr. Jacoby? He said, well, can't pull a breast collar around. Can't get, can't, when we get on him, can't move our hands. And I said, oh, he's just pulling your string. I said, give him a good whooping and that'll go away. And the next day or two, he called me back. And said, well, yeah, I just don't understand. I said, I'll tell you what, him that horse up in the corner and kick him in the belly until both of you can't breathe. And I said, if it don't go away, I'll come get him. And he lived way south of San Antonio. And I never heard no more from him. <laughs> one of them, one of the other of them must have got killed. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But I should have kept that horse because he would have been one of them. That, I mean, he could have gone on with him. He could have gone on and done something. Uh, big, big and pretty and, and never missed a lead after I got him. After lined that, out. Lined out. He, boy, he just did things just like he's supposed to. But, you know, it, it's just what you, they'll do what you expect. And what you demand, or That's right. what you show. That's right. You know, but uh, a lot of people. I, well, they'd quit that horse. Well, scared yeah. of him, or well, just a lot made, of, yeah, a lot of I honestly, made, a lot of people uh, wouldn't have uh, rode it. That's right. And he made me nervous some, but I wasn't smart enough to quit riding him. You know. How old was you, John? I was in the middle fifties. Well, that's. <laughs> that was that was in. They've been too long ago. Too, well, ten years, eight, eight, ten years ago. Ah, uh, that's probably 2003, 2002. I don't know. Maybe, yeah. I'm about well, we're looking for a uh, good working horse. Uh, what kind of background do you want that horse to have? What kind of stock? What kind of bloodlines? Or well, is it bloodlines? Yeah. A lot of ranch. A lot of it's bloodlines. A lot of a lot of ranches. Horses carry a good reputation or a bad reputation, uh, and, and a lot of the reputation they get is not necessarily the horse's fault, it's the cowboy's. Uh, but if you're going to go pick a horse uh, to, to, do on. to do on, to train on, first thing you look at is his eye. Mm -hmm. If he's got a bad eye, the rest of it don't matter because he's not going to be very good. I mean, he might be exceptional, athletic and whatnot, but he, might, but he might not ever be fun to ride. Johnny, explain a bad eye. Well, that's just an old hard, uh, uh, just got an old bad look. You know, yeah. Too much white. Well, well a, lot, a lot of times too much white. A lot of times to me, white shows scared more than that's mean. That's right. But I, you see some horses that just mean. It's Philly that I sold had a bad eye for a long time. And when I finally got through to her, you could see a difference in the way she looked at you. Uh, but it takes somebody that kind of knows. But you kind of have to understand. I, they had a horse at the prison. I, Warden sent me out there to straighten out some horses that the kennel had out there for the field force to ride. And they didn't have anybody that really understood. And they had an old fellow named Joe Martin that, that started those horses. And Joe could ride about anything, had hair and raised on milk. But he, he didn't. He might not get them where the rest of them could, and I'm not being critical, but uh, he, he just figured everybody's like that, and they weren't. But uh, they, one of the last crop of colts that they got Joe started in, in this horse was bad height. And when I, I got, Warden sent me, I, I was transferring back and forth between the kennel and the field, riding those horses at times. and. Uh, that horse, I told Sergeant or kennel boss out there. He said something about that horse, and I said that horse has got a bad eye. He said, "What do you mean?" <laughs> I said, "Well, go look at it. Walk right up there and look in his eye." And he walked up beside him, looked at him. He said, "You know, you're right." He said, "I never noticed that." I said, "Most folks don't." That's right. But that horse never did. I don't know if they still still got him or not. I don't. He never did get to where. He, one of the lieutenants was riding him, and he slang him off whenever he got ready. He wouldn't buck him off. He'd just be trotting along and just figured out he could do it. Yeah, yeah. Dump him off. <laughs> then well, he'd have a loose horse. <coughs> have a loose field. 